Hello, this is Coach Wilson, and this is Chapter 6, Section 2. Today we're going to be talking about the powers and roles of the president. Now, first off, as our nation has grown, the president's job has as well. You know, when George Washington took over in 1789, I don't know that our country really had a good idea of exactly what a president's role was or what his job was meant to do. Some examples, the energy and environment. Never would you have heard Thomas Jefferson talking about the environment or in, uh, energy or you know, we need to find different ways to deal with um, those problems, mainly because they didn't exist during his, his presidency. Um, dealing with a diverse population, you know, obviously there were immigrants coming in during the early 1800s from Ireland and Germany and some of those Eastern European countries. But even then, the population has changed so much that presidents have had to change the way they view immigrants as well as the population itself. And economic issues. I, I think early on, that was one of the few things we would say that it was very clear that a president was going to have to um, address and deal with. Um, but specifically, economic issues over time have really changed. And then finally, one of the last things is terrorism. You think about um, ever since 9-11, and really a little bit before that, presidents really became responsible for dealing with the problems from other countries um, that could potentially attack our nation um, and do it underhandedly or secretly under where there was no pre or, you know, warning or anything of that nature. Now, the president okay, is the chief executive. And he is the head of the executive branch. He meets with his cabinet, controls the bureaucracy, and that's everyone who's working for the government, carries out and enforces the laws, which we've talked about significantly, and is uh, capable of appointing government officials, specifically Supreme Court justices, department heads, with Senate approval. Now, um, the Senate does have to approve any of these positions that are appointed to ensure that they are fit for duty. Um, however, it is important because um, those the Senate essentially decides whether or not you get put into power. So the president, despite having the ability to appoint government officials, does have a, a check uh, and balance system there on his power as well. Now, he's also the chief diplomat. He deals with any foreign governments. Um, he also is responsible for appointing ambassadors uh, with the Senate's approval. So those are people from other countries who are people who go to other countries, um, uh, essentially representing the United States. He makes treaties with the Senate's approval and acts as a mediator between nations. Right? So anytime that there is an issue between maybe for example, Israel and Iraq, or pretty much Israel and every Middle Eastern country. Um, the United States has served as a mediator between them over the course of time. The United States has served as a mediator in various other places. If you think about during the uh, Japanese-Russian uh, War in um, the early 1900s with Teddy Roosevelt, he acted as a mediator between his nations. I think he even won a Nobel Peace Prize for it. Also known as the Commander-in-Chief, okay, because he is the leader of the armed forces. He is responsible for commanding the troops. And he can send troops to other countries for up to 60 days without Congress's um, explicit like declaration of war or um, approval. He also decides whether to bomb foreign cities during a war. Right? And we realize that the president had this power during World War II when Harry S. Truman uh, was responsible for dropping uh, the atomic bomb. He's responsible for picking military leaders. Okay? He's also known as the chief of state, which is a symbolic leader of the nation. Okay? Uh, meets with foreign leaders, makes patriotic speeches and visits, and is uh, mostly responsible for symbolic gestures. Okay, So things like um, uh, maybe speaking at a specific event or, um, you know, um, during a specific honoring of our country by our government, he's going to be the person that speaks or, or gives that um, benediction. Okay, He is responsible for a lot of various things, but essentially he is the chief citizen of our country. He's also a legislative leader, and I don't think a lot of times we think of our president as that. 
Um, but he's responsible for sending Congress a budget, which obviously m many, many people have a hand in helping create. He's responsible for giving the State of the Union address in which he talks about where our country is headed, um, what we need to focus on in the coming year, um, as well as where um, our nation needs to go in order to be successful. He's also the judicial leader. He appoints federal and Supreme Court justices, um, obviously with the Senate's approval. Um, some judicial powers okay, um, that he has as a president. Okay, can, he can grant immunity, which makes someone free from prosecution. He can pardon someone, which forgives someone of their crimes, does not need approval of Congress to do this. He can offer a reprieve, which delays the punishment for someone. He can also communicate uh, uh, someone's sentence, okay, um, which reduces a person's um, sentence, okay, and that is his powers as a president. Um, hopefully, you guys have an understanding of kind of what the president can and can't do. I know we went through this a little quick, um, but remember, a president has powers that are balanced by the Senate, and the Supreme Court, and House of Representatives, but powers that are given to a president which makes him a very very powerful man or woman um, when elected so that's all i have for you today hopefully you guys are getting this information uh, please let me know if you have any problems and if you're not i'll talk to you soon